was IOE Throne, and we're back with some more World Tanks. So as you can see, this is Seth in his STB-1. This is a tier 10 game on Lakeville. It's a regular game. Let's uh, get that map big enough that I can see it. We also have, uh, we have Ronick in his uh, 140, Object 140, and on the end is Chief in his E5. So before we get this game underway, that was interesting. Seth is apparently AFK. So while he's getting to uh, battle, if you want to talk to me on my Facebook, Twitter, or Twitch, 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 Dexter, I have Twitch, but I seldom stream for some reason. By the way, if you guys want me to stream more, tell me. I I do have the capability of stream streaming, and I do occasionally when I remember or when somebody asks me to, I will stream games. Uh, so if you want to talk to me on my Facebook, Duxter, or Twitter accounts, links are in the description below. Oh, come on, hit the bad chat. No! Um, I, if you like the video, you're not shot. Uh, it really does help me out quite a bit. If you dislike it, dislike it. But tell me either way. And last thing, if you want to support the channel directly, the best way by far is uh, to donate straight to my Patreon account. Again, the link is in the description below. And, uh, yeah. So, now that that's all over and done with, we can get on with the game. So, already the enemy team has lost their bad chat. Now, he got a little bit aggressive with his scouting, and uh, Ronick and everyone else about lit him and then killed him. Poor E75 seems to have taken a beating at some point. And, uh,. Seth is just going to charge right in here. He looks like he's, he's decided against charging right in. He wants to come down and help Chief out. Uh, probably almost got himself shot by the Lorraine. But thankfully, didn't. And now we know that nobody else is on the road in the middle. But, oop, no, we don't. There's a bulldog. Nope, never mind. It's in the valley. Oops. That, though, is an STB-1. And in the last three. So Seth is trying to make sure he doesn't get himself shot again because that hurt. And the IS3 is looking over this direction. Bounce the shot probably from the STB1. Though maybe it was from the 1390. The shot felt like a small caliber weapon. Uh, okay, so unfortunately, uh, Seth ran into the back end of Chief and knew that. Good shot taking out the E100. So that could have gone really badly because uh, because of the fact that Seth ran into the back end of Chief, it could have uh, prevented Chief from getting out of the way of any oncoming rounds. Now Seth is attempting to size scrape here. Uh, now the, unfortunately for him, the I-7 is completely ignoring him. I don't think he can actually size scrape in this tank. Fairly certain the I-7 yeah, overmatches armor. Uh, so this is a bad strategy. Um, he's also getting shot in the back. That can't be right. Uh, I think Chief shot him in the back. We're we're gonna have to uh, figure that out when we get back. He's getting a hit from what looks like behind. Uh, so that's either uh, like the mouse popping out and shooting him in the back, or potentially he was actually getting shot by Chief for some of that. I don't know, uh, but yeah, no, he got, he definitely got shot in the back. So either the mouse was shooting him, or Chief was shooting him, or both. Either way, we will figure it at all later at the end of the game. But for right now, Seth is on 700 health and not very happy. He outplayed that IS-7, but it didn't matter so much because he did take damage from other sources. And now, the enemy STB-1 and the IS-3 are continuing to push up this road. Now, this is not something I recommend uh, because of the fact that they are pushing into uh, forces that I'm not going to say outnumber them, definitely overpower them. They have Seth shooting in uh, from the side, and Ronick in front of them. That STB-1, it 
made a mistake. And by the time he realized he made a mistake, he was committed. So instead of um, running away, he pressed harder, which was exactly the right move. Because once he got himself into that situation, he wasn't going to get back out. Not without being dead. So he might as well press into and try and kill Ronic. Now, fortunately for him, it was Ronic over there, so that, that strategy obviously didn't work. And uh, the last thing he said before he left was, Oh, you're the blue. As he realized, of course, how much trouble Ronic was going to give him. Now, this is, this is what happens when you get shot in the side by a T-30. T-30 round entered, sorry, that was the wrong button. T-30 round entered here, took off 691 health. Oh, is the proper remark. Because if anything scratches him right now, he is dead. Fortunately for him, enemy team apparently can't shoot straight. That uh, SU-1254 shot should have killed him, but it missed barely. So, because of the fact that they can't see him anymore, he's free to rain shots over there, and they can't do anything about it. They've lost their lights in the city, and Ronick is providing us with lights so that we can continue doing damage while... They have no choice but to sit there and just get absolutely overrun. Now there is an E1, F T54, and a Waffentrager still in this game. They look like they were the ones defending the valley and they are probably setting up a defense for our push up here. Now, Ronick is going to again try and get in, try and get some lights, or hurt the, uh, you know, take out the Waffentrager. And that is a problem. So, if uh, if they got two guys on the cap before we could get two guys on their cap, we would lose this game. But it doesn't look like it. It looks like either they split up, or one of them decided he didn't actually have to get on the cap. Either way, we know where at least one enemy tank is. That'd be the T-54E1. So, not certain this is a good idea. But, ooh, the E1's in the open, so just put a shot into him and move. And Seth is going to continue doing this over and over again. Uh, now, unfortunately, friendlies are about to cap. So Seth needs to get out there and take another shot before game's over. Uh, nope, apparently game's going to be over. Yes. Does get one more shot in. 2300 experience without premium, without his daily double. Now, I know he did an astounding amount of things, but I'm going to guess that there was some sort of mission reward that got him uh, so much experience, because that seems a little bit high for how much work he put out. And of course, he netted himself the Tank Sniper Award, High Caliber, Confederate, Bruiser, Fire for Effect, Duelist, which I love, and of course, the Mastery Badge, Ace Tanker. Ace Tanker. That's not an ace tanker. That is a first class battle. You may have heard me uh, facepalm. Because I did. Because that was silly of me to say ace tanker when I obviously first class. Anyways, um, 7,000, pretty much 7,800 damage dealt. Wow. Unfortunately, he only managed to secure three kills. But he did get that confederate, so it makes up for it a little bit. Wow. Um, Ronick put in a lot of work himself. 4,000 damage and almost equal experience between these two. I'm going to guess Ronick, yeah. 3,000 spawning damage, which is why he got so much experience, even though he didn't do nearly as much damage himself. Now, unfortunately, the decision by the friendly tanks at the end to cap let these two survive... This guy um, did, didn't deserve to live for that battle. He was a top tier tank, or sorry, a mid tier tank who did nothing the entire game. That's really sad. 
compensation for damage caused by allies. So, where is Chief? Nope. Okay. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. He did 407 damage to the back end of Seth. Apparently, at some point when Seth was juking back and forth, Chief shot him in the back because he, you know, never ever try and juke. I'm leaving him. Uh, no, that's not true. But, um... It is more likely to get yourself shot by a friendly if you're juking around when you have a friendly trying to shoot behind you. Uh, bad things tend to happen. So communication, guys, even in platoons, can still mess each other's days up really, really badly. Okay. Ooh, a little bit of spine damage. That's cool. I don't remember him actually tracking anyone except for the I-7, so that's probably actual spotting damage. Avoiding things like the STB-1 or the I, uh, the E3 uh, on the middle road there. Yes, of course. So he did get a mission payout, which got him a little bit, or doubled his experience. And that is a lot more reasonable for what he did. That was a great game. Thank you so much, Seth, for sending this in. Thank you all for watching. Have a great night. This is IOE3. Hey, folks, this is IOE3, and we're back with some more World Tanks. Side scraping. How to counter player who side scraping. So the E100 is trying to side scrape. And you can see, oh, let's see where we're Ooh, Ronick is actually firing at the engine deck of the enemy tank. And, well, that makes sense, because Ronick's gun is actually higher up than the enemy tank's engine deck, so he can aim down. And if he, if he concentrates right, and if he, oh, well, yeah, T57, really? How, how did you miss that shot on the T57? Really? That was like a free shot. So the enemy in on her is getting really pissed that, that Ronick can somehow penetrate him uh, without being, you know, be, without exposing enough of his tank so that Ron or so this guy can kill Ronick. So Ronick's, yeah, again, gonna shoot for the engine deck. 